Um, yeah. So fast forward um, during COVID, then my mom gets diagnosed with uh, lung cancer. And not a smoker, any of that. She had some health issues, but nothing that would have um, or yeah, would have made us think, oh, she's going to get lung cancer. Like, no, nothing mm -hmm. like that. So <clears throat> in, yeah, 2020, she, um, the year before she was having some issues, but it wasn't until that January of 2020 that they confirmed that that's what was happening. Uh -uh. And, and it was like the same thing. They're like 12 months. Wow. And you're like, no, like this can't, this cannot be happening again. I wasn't, I was definitely not ready for that. Um, and she, um, she only did chemo because she, we asked her to, <laughs> I guess. Oh, wow. she didn't really want to. It wasn't something she really wanted to do. And, you know, she she wanted to be here. She just didn't want to have to fight so hard to be here. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's like she worked in healthcare. She she saw people, she saw my dad go through and see how or see how chemo changed him. Mm -hmm. And it was it was um it was a difficult process. And she even, you know, my mom's a big believer, you know, she's, you know, my mom's a, was a woman of God is, you know, but she also was into alternative healing. So like uh, Reiki, she was into that. We were going to a Reiki healer doing stuff like that. And which actually helped her get through chemo. Mm. Um, it helps take away some of the side effects but uh, watching my mom change too was very difficult. And I went through a period where then I started to compartmentalize everything. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, Tracy, no longer existed. It mm -hmm. was, I had a goal or I had just, I became a different person. And it was literally 24 seven taking care of. My mom making sure she, making sure she had everything she needed when she needed. I don't, I don't recall sleeping for a year. Mm -hmm. Like I do not recall actually having a, a real sleep because mm -hmm. after she went to the ER a couple of times and then decided she no longer wanted to do chemo, we put her on hospice because oh. she wanted to be in her home, and um, I slept next to her in the living room for the remainder. And I do not recall sleeping. I think I stared at her most, of the, <laughs> most of the time when everybody else was like, you need to go to sleep. You need to eat. And I was like, I'm good. I'm good. Like, don't like, don't let me just mm -hmm. figure this out because I was trying to prepare myself or figure out how different life was going to be without both parents when you're super close with your parents yeah, trying to figure out what that was going to be like. And I couldn't wrap my, my head around that. And so when she passed that same feeling I had when I was 16, 17 with the depression all came back to me again. Mm -hmm. And this time it was maybe 10 times worse for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I, um, my, my I, you know, I owe my sister a lot because I tell her this, and I don't know if she even takes it seriously, but she really did save my life because um, after losing my mom, she was the next thing that I was super close to. Me and my sister have an amazing relationship and I, um, 
yeah, nothing else really mattered to me. And she tried to pull me out of it. And I remember we did like a sister vacation and I had just told her, I said, um, you know, I don't know if I really want to do this life thing. Um, it's like, I don't know if it's, it's not that cute to me anymore. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I want to do it. And, you know, people say that you get concerned, right? You know, even though I'm, I pretty much make jokes all the time and, you know, that's what my family knows me for, just kind of being silly and funny. Mm -hmm. But my sister looked at me like, that's not very funny. <laughs> mm, yes. This is not a joke. And so she was very worried about me leaving her and not being around a lot of people and so she it became everyone calling me all the time are you okay what are you doing where are you at <laughs> pick up everyone went crazy like where is she and in a state of panic but I did I just I got to a point where I just didn't really think I wanted to do this anymore and that's a horrible place to be in a horrible place to be in yeah. and so I went to you know I had enough people telling me go get help. And I, I called my doctor and she found me someone right away. And that was a blessing. Cause I still, I'm still seeing her and, you know, I, I'm okay with talking about stuff like this because I think it's important because again, mental health is extremely important and it affects <laughs> all of us. Yeah. And it's nothing, especially women men of color it's yeah. important to to discuss it and not pretend like we don't mm -hmm. have stuff going on so yeah. so yeah i'm in a better space today um and i'm a much happier person and um yeah but has this path been easy? No, not at all. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I appreciate you sharing that um, because it is, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of a lot of us lost our love, love, loved ones, and mm. and um, and I started this during the pandemic. You know, my dad passed away. You know, in a hospital. And caught mm. COVID in a hospital, you know. So you know that it's it's. Um, he was seventy seven. He was fine going in. Caught COVID, doesn't come out. And so you know this. But but having the space to be able to share how challenges can challenging it can be is really to help others to think actually I'm not alone. And um, mm. so that's why I was really appreciate everything you were saying is really important and powerful because a lot of people think they're alone and think it's just them. And uh, don't realize that there is help out there. And it um, doesn't matter if somebody says, oh, don't, you know, you have got, you know, what would you have, your family going to miss you and stuff. But when you're in that place, it doesn't matter what people say. If okay. you want to go, you want to go. And um, it, it, it's, it takes skill to be able to like, listen and then try and walk you through it as opposed to trying to tell you all the things you're going to miss. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely. Right. I can tell that I've come a long way because even though my eyes tear up when I talk about it, because it's it's it is sad to ever get to a point where where you feel like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but the fact that I can talk about it and I don't completely fall apart anymore. <laughs> means I feel like I've made progress mm -hmm. that, um, that it wouldn't have been the right thing to do. And, you know, that I, you know, my story isn't finished yet. I still have a lot to do while I'm here. And then plus it's not, you know, it's not our choice or our, you know, to, to make those types of decisions for ourselves and my mother and father would have been highly upset at me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, they would uh, not be happy so <laughs> you know yeah um, well especially if you, you've just made these uh, the dean's list in the fall they're like come on 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I never participated in that kind of hey, the summer in between. Us for even loving us on which I didn't miss you. Oh, really. oh, oh, what was it like growing up? It is a fish that had an impact on me. Four houses down. I ain't have a crew. I didn't get this one and that one. But that works for me, but just for me, I don't know. No, 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 okay, you're okay. Yep. The only thing that goes to the boys and men in all spirits. Lay it. Okay, right now. These guys that are working. I mean, I, was, I, I, love, I love all different jobs.